Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fantastic. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at creating this speed dial interactive component in Figma. As always, if you'd like to save time and download the source file for this component, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's take a look at how this can be created in Figma. The first thing we need to do is create a screen. So I'm gonna press F on my keyboard and then under prototype over here, I'm gonna look for iPhone 11 Pro or X or any device you'd like to do this for, right? So I chose this one and you can see that it created a green like this, a new frame. Um, we're gonna go to prototype settings over here and then we're gonna choose a device that will be the iPhone 11 Pro and the model will be, let's say, silver or space gray, whatever you prefer. And what this is gonna do is show us a blank screen with, uh, with the new device. Let's, let's test this out, right? So you can see we, have, we currently have a blank screen, which makes sense because there is nothing on this frame. When I add a rectangle, it will appear right here. So this is our uh, screen, right? I'm gonna remove this. And the first thing we need to do is, well, the next thing we need to do actually is uh, to create one of the options that will show up when you uh, open this speed dial menu. So I'm gonna use an ellipse tool and then create an ellipse that will be approximately 50 pixels. I'm gonna duplicate the ellipse and create another one that will be about 24. And it's gonna be slightly darker. Or actually, let's, let's make it Let's make it 30. I'm gonna move this smaller one over here and create a component from this. I'm gonna name this component icon and then I'm gonna use an instance of this icon under assets. I'm gonna click and drag it over here. So we have a component and an instance right here. If you'd like to learn more about uh, components and instances, make sure to check out my channel where I did a tutorial on this. So if you're confused by components and instances, definitely go check that out. I'm gonna center, center these two against one another and then I'm gonna select this thing, press Command Option G, this will create a frame. I'm gonna rename this frame option and then I'm gonna turn this frame into a component as well. So we have an icon component uh, that is nested within an option component and you can see that when we change the icon component, it's gonna be updated right here. So that's the goal. I'm gonna create another variant of the option. This variant is gonna be called hover and this one, we're gonna keep that at default and we're gonna name this property state, right? So we have a, a component with a property called state with default and hover values. This default state, uh, that's gonna be a white color, it's gonna be white, the first ellipse. And in case of this hover state, we're gonna do a very light gray. And I'm gonna also add a fill to this component so that we can see what's going on. All right. What this means that uh, we're trying to do that when you hover over one of these options, it will darken a little bit, right? So we're gonna see a slightly darker gray than in the default state. So let's say right like this. And then under prototype, I'm gonna select the first option and connect that to the default state, to the hover state, sorry. And I'm gonna say while hovering, change to state hover. And this is gonna be instant. This means that when we use the option component on our green, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna place one of these right here. When we hover over those, um, you can see that it's, it's changing. It doesn't make sense to use hover for mobile. However, um, this component is intended to be used both on desktop and mobile. So you can always disable this interaction when you feel like you don't need it. The next thing we need to do is use the option instance and then duplicate that, let's say, three uh, two times so that we get th uh, three in total. I'm gonna select those and press Shift A to add auto layout. And this auto layout is gonna be called options. And we're gonna add some padding, especially at the bottom. Uh, I think we could go for like 70, 80 pixels, 70 maybe. 
and then on the left and right side I think we could go for like 10 yeah something like that and I'm gonna center this I'm gonna make sure these both are 10 so we get an auto layout like this you can see that we have these ellipses as icons everywhere so um, the intention here is if I create another variant of the icon and organize this a little bit let's say I'm gonna have three variants of this icon um, I'm gonna use text so that this is more understandable I'm gonna type in one you can see that the one is now everywhere I'm gonna place that oops I'm gonna place that exactly in the middle that's heavy so if I use this number here as well and here as well and of course retype this to two and three you can see that I have basically three different icons and I can now go into this instance of the option component and change this to variant two and change the icon here as well to variant three. So we have options that are now have different icons and the interaction is the same. You can see that the hover is still functioning with all of these, they just have different icons. We're gonna also probably reduce the opacity of the gray ellipse, maybe hide it completely even. So this is what we get right now, right? You get these three options with this hover state. I'm gonna maybe increase spacing of this. And right now we are ready to take this options auto layout and turn that into a component as well. So this is now an options, that's plural, options component with option component and icon component all together right here. Now we need to do the plus, the blue plus icon, the circle that will actually open this menu. So I'm gonna use the ellipse tool again and create an ellipse that is gonna be 70 by 70 pixels. Let's just test the size and let's see if that looks good. Yeah, I think 70 pixels seems about right. Um, I'm gonna make this blue, of course, and turn this into a component. Component is gonna be called speed dial menu. I'm gonna use the pen tool and create a plus icon like this. Duplicate this line, rotate that 90 degrees. We have a plus. Brilliant. So we're gonna rename this. We're gonna group these two and rename this to uh, icon. I'm gonna now press option H and option V to center this against the background. You can see that we have get some half pixels. So let's just make this pixel perfect. Let's just, instead of um, the height being 20.5, let's do 20 and let's do 20 here as well. And let's center these two against one another. And then the whole icon group also center like this. That way we get an even number of pixels. Well. A whole number of pixels from each side it's 25 and I can now go over here and create a variant of the speed dial menu I'm gonna place it right here I'm gonna also move this towards the bottom like this I'm gonna basically prepare mimic kind of the layout of this final menu and what I'm gonna do now is actually use the options instance so I'm gonna go over to assets search for options I'm gonna use this this instance press command X click this second variant and press command V I'm gonna also use these icons right here to align this towards the bottom and to the middle and I'm gonna make sure this says center and this says bottom right the reason being, if we add another option, it's gonna stack up upwards, not downwards, right? You can see that we have no space here, no distance between the third option and the, the blue button. So I'm gonna just add the same number of pixels that's between these options. I'm gonna add that here, which is 16. So I'm gonna go over here to options component and under the bottom padding, I'm gonna add 16 pixels. Now you can see the spacing is even. Also, I'm gonna choose the ellipse right here, right? So not the whole variant, but the ellipse specifically, and I'm gonna add some drop shadow. I'm gonna do a blur like this. I'm gonna do some distance. I'm gonna also sample the color from the button, make it transparent, and then make it more blurry this maybe I'm gonna then click on the drop shadow effect copy select the ellipse right here as well and command V so that we get the same exact shadow I'm gonna also click this icon right here 
I'm gonna rotate this 45 degrees like this so we get a cross icon. Um, I'm gonna also move these options below the ellipse and icon object so that I'm, I'm pressing command and right bracket or left bracket actually to move this towards the bottom. And now if we look at the dial menu component and I'm gonna turn this to variant 2, I'm gonna place it right here, you can see this is what the final result will look like. Right, there's no interaction for now. So I'm gonna just rename this property to state again. And then these individual states are gonna be called state default or closed. And this one's gonna be called open. I'm gonna then copy the options instance, command C, click this variant and press command V. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually move this about here and set the opacity to zero. This is so that we can nicely animate the options coming in from the bottom. Finally, what we're gonna do now, select the variant, the whole variant right here, go to prototype and then connect that over here. And I'm gonna say mouse enter, change to state open, and it's gonna be smart animate. And it's gonna take, let's say 180 milliseconds. And then I'm gonna select the options, I'm gonna connect that to the initial variant. Here I'm gonna say mouse leave, change to state closed and also smart animate. Additionally I'm gonna select the blue, I'm gonna select the whole variant and then connect that here as well to the first variant as well but this time I'm gonna say on tap, change to state closed, smart animate is out 180. I'm gonna also do one final adjustment and that is changing the color of this ellipse. It will be just slightly darker, just very, very slightly darker. I'm gonna also change the numbers so that they are smaller like this. And um, yeah, I'm gonna select this component right here. I'm gonna say closed. I'm gonna tie this to right and bottom and change the background to be very light gray. And now the moment of truth, I'm gonna relaunch the prototype and see what we've created. And here is the final result. When I hover over the blue icon, over the blue button, first it's gonna rotate, and also these options are gonna pop up right here. And then when I hover over these options, they change color, and when I move my mouse outside these, it's gonna close automatically. I can also click this icon to close the menu, but you can see we have a slight problem that we're gonna fix. It's gonna keep opening again because the interaction is set to mouse enter the blue area when it's closed and as soon as you close it you immediately open it again so you end up in a loop. The way to fix this is duplicate the closed state. We're gonna name this closed uh, 2 and we're gonna set this interaction with the clicking to lead to this on accident. On tap, change to state closed too. I'm gonna to also remove this mouse enter interaction and actually do this, connect that to the very first state and then say mouse leave. So what's gonna happen now is if you click this icon, it's gonna close and then when you leave this state, it's gonna revert back to its initial state where you can again enter that with your mouse and it's gonna open again. So let's test this out. You see what's happening? I close it, it no longer opens. I need to hover outside this. I need to move my mouse outside this area and then come back again so that this whole thing resets. And because we've chosen this component-based approach, you can see that I can easily duplicate the options right here and it's gonna add automatically. We don't have to change anything. We can have as many options as we'd like. It functions the same way and you can see that we can remove or add any of these as we, as we see fit. Uh, you can, for example, set up an interaction where this will navigate you to another page. So if I say that this is page two, page two, and this is gonna be page page one, and then I'm gonna go over here actually to this component and I'm gonna set, that when you click, when you tap this, you'll navigate to page two and when you click this, you navigate to page one. Here you can see what happens. 
I open this, click two, it takes me to page two. I open this again, click one, takes me to page one. So this is just one example of a navigation like this, but this is usually, uh, this uh, speed dial menu is usually uh, to open some kind of overlay or to create something new to add, you know, whatever, but uh, it can be used as a navigation as well. So that's one of the use cases. And um, if, for example, you'd like to decide that the hover color is now going to be green, so that it's going to be green when you hover over these options, you can change that. The way I have just changed this, very easy to customize. But I'm probably going to revert this back to gray. So this is how you create a speed dial menu. If you'd like to download the source file for this component, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end and leave a like if you learned something new. I will see you in the next one.